Good morning. Today is Tuesday, the 13th of February. Welcome to our morning devotion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We consider again the words of Luke chapter 18, verse 31. And taking the twelve, Jesus said to them, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and everything that is written about the Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished. That Christ had to suffer and die is clear from the fact that it was announced beforehand by God through the prophets. Moreover, as today's reading shows, Christ's death was absolutely necessary for the redemption of the world. Why does Jesus refer to himself here as the Son of Man? He clearly wants to refer the disciples to the seed of the woman who had been promised to the fallen man in Eden. He would crush the head of the serpent that would otherwise kill him with a poisonous sting in his heel. In addition, Christ wanted the disciples to recall the words of the prophet who announced that a child would be born for fallen mankind, a son who would be wounded for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities. The life of this son would be given as a sacrifice for sin. Jesus referred to himself in this way to underscore the necessity of his death for the redemption of the world, as had been foretold by the prophets. So we can avoid error in reflecting on all of this. Let us look at the various accounts of the suffering and resurrection of the Lord. When Christ began his spiritual suffering in Gethsemane, he said, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But the cup of inexpressible suffering did not pass from him. He had to empty it. God's answer to Christ's prayer was, in effect, No, my dear son, in whom I am well pleased, it is not possible if the world is to be redeemed. When soon, after, when soon thereafter Peter wielded his sword to save Christ, from the bodily suffering that stood before him, Jesus said to him, Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then should the scriptures be fulfilled, that it must be so? And later, when Christ had risen from the dead, he spoke thus to the disciples on the road to Emmaus, who could still not resign themselves to his suffering. O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken, was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Even Christ's enemies had to be conformed to the divine will. They by no means wanted to kill Jesus during the Passover, when so many people had gathered in Jerusalem, lest there be an uproar from the people. But God's hour the hour of redemption of the world had come, and hell had already been unleashed against Christ. It is such an important truth that Christ's suffering and death were absolutely necessary for our salvation. We see from this that God is by no means only a dear, lenient father, as most people suppose. Instead, he is a holy and just being. He hates sin and his wrath burns against it. Had Christ, the Son of God, been unwilling to take all of man's sins upon himself and to atone for them with his inexpressible suffering and agonizing death, God neither could nor would have been able to save any man. We also see, see here how foolish it is for people to think they can hope for God's grace while they continue to cling to open or secret sin. Such people make a devil out of God, for it is the devil, not the holy God, who 
who takes no notice of sin. Therefore, whoever has been clearly and convincingly shown that some behavior of his is a sin, who nevertheless refuses to let go of that sin, and who comforts himself with the thought that God's great grace applies to him, is actually sinning against grace, trampling upon the Son of God who bled for his sins, considering the blood of the testament impure, and insulting the spirit of grace. What awaits him is the judgment and the fire that will consume the enemies of God. And so we pray. Grant that I thy passion view with repentant grieving, nor thee crucify anew by unholy living. How could I refuse to shun every sinful pleasure, since for me God's only Son suffered without measure? Amen. And we pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we also pray together. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.